Hey guys, I'm all back again. Here is the Motorola Plus, a charging cable if you are in the US. I know other countries, they get a charging brick, but here in the States, still slightly annoyed that there's no charging brick included. And I still blame Apple for that. You guys are new here. Welcome to day 17th in the life of this phone. Other than some initial complaints here and there, I overall still love the phone. It is fast and responsive as it is from day one. Still slightly annoyed by the charging situation because not all charging bricks are made the same. And since charging bricks are not included anymore in the US, you are led to figure out which brick will work for your phone. So I mentioned this in my early day videos, but I have a OnePlus 10T charger that is 120 watt capability and it works fine with my Galaxy S20 and my Pixel. Of course, you're not going to get the 120 watt. You're going to get the max that your phone can support. In addition to that, I could also use my laptop charger, which is a 65 watt charging brick and both of those phones work as well. And they get about 15 watt when I'm charging. It's not as full capability, but it is still considered fast charging. I don't know how the signs work behind that. I just know that is what I get when I use those particular bricks. And for some reason, the Motorola Razr Plus does not work well with those, either of those two bricks. It only works with my 45 watt Samsung fast charging brick. And when I use the Samsung one, it allows me to get a full charge with my phone in about an hour and 20 minutes. And for whatever reasons, when I use those other two charging bricks, it takes up to three hours to charge. I have no idea why, because when you plug it in, it says turbo charging, so you assume it is fast charging at 30 watt, but that's not always the case. So just be mindful which charging bricks you are using. Battery life is a little bit above average for this phone. I've been using it every day just to do normal tasks, checking emails, send a few Snapchat in there throughout the day. All my friends' group chat is on Snapchat, so I use that pretty often. I watch YouTube videos throughout the day as well. I use a speaker for audio. I barely ever use headphones or earbuds. I do own them. I just don't like having things in my ear for long periods of time. So I prefer to use the speakers. The speaker is loud enough. I don't crank it to max volume or anything like that. As long as it's loud enough for me to hear, I'm okay with it. I'm not blasting music or jam into EDM or hip hop daily. I mostly just watch YouTube videos, audiobooks, motivational speeches, learning random tips and tricks on pickleball or other, or other things. And it pretty much can handle everything I throw at it. I start my day at 6.30 a.m. Around 3.30 p.m. I'll probably need a charge if I'm using the phone very heavily. And I do have a spare phone with me every time I go anywhere just in case I need to record videos or do other things for work. So occasionally I would have hotspot on, GPS on, music, and Bluetooth. So all of that can drain the phone pretty quickly. And I notice the phone does warm up if I'm doing all those four things at once. I think Hotspot in general is pretty taxing on any smartphone, so just keep that in mind. But if I use my phone normally, I can get 15 hours of battery life on this phone. Although when I had the Galaxy S23, the small version before, under my super light usage day, I can manage to make it to 17 to 24 hours of battery life. So I would say the S23 has a slight edge there. I mean, your mileage is gonna vary, but so far with the Moto, my best days, I have had 15 hours of battery life and nothing beyond that, which is still pretty solid. As long as it lasts me from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, I would consider that an all day battery life and I don't have an issue with charging my phone overnight and using it in the morning. Motorola camera is not the best in the market, but it is enough to get by with most normal everyday tasks. I got some great photos on this phone. Video quality is okay. It's not as good as the Google Pixel. And recently, due to one of the suggestions in the comment, I decided to attempt to port the Google camera onto my Razer Plus by downloading an APK. I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you are 100% sure that the website is safe. So I tried to do that. I downloaded an APK. Everything installed just fine. It allows me to use my Motorola phone with the Google camera app. So I was super excited. Everything was easy to install and set up. But once I launch up the camera, it looks pretty similar and familiar with my Pixel, which I did like. But once I started to snap a picture, for some reason, everything freezes. And I have no idea why it's not working. I wasn't expecting everything to port over correctly. So there's something I want to point out there. 
But the videos does work for some reason. When I hit record, it record properly, it's sent to my Google Photos, but every time I take a picture, the app would just crash and the picture would never capture. I was paying to do some comparison with pictures, but it looks like I can't really do that. If any of you guys find another way to do it, just let me know. This is me downloading an unsafe random APK off the internet. May or may not get a virus. But so far, the photos just crashes whenever I take a picture. Videos work, however. So right now, I'm actually recording recording this video using the Google camera app on my Moto Reza Plus. So let me know how the quality looks. All my previous videos I have been using the Motorola main camera app and I'm using the Google. For some reason when I use the Motorola main camera app, I always get a crop in view. There's like a black bar on the top and bottom. I'm curious if this is going to show up once I finish recording. And another downside of using the Google camera app, whenever I'm vlogging, I'm not going to get the preview screen. Although ironically, since the front of the screen is uh, reflective, I can actually just frame myself by using the reflection instead of seeing a physical um, projection preview. So it kind of works out either way. But let me know how the quality looks with the Google camera app and you want me to do any further tests. I'll probably do some more for fun anyways whenever I see something cool to take videos of instead of myself. <laughs> I will uh, try to launch both apps and see if there's any differences. Another thing I did notice in the Google camera app, it does have an 8K option. I click on it anyways, but since Motorola Razor Plus doesn't support 8K, you just see black screen so you can't really record there. Just something new. I wanted to experiment and share with you guys. And jumping back to the regular Motorola camera app, if you guys wanted to, you can go into the settings, turn on the watermark, and let people know what phone you're using, and you can add your names if you want to add watermark to your photos. Not sure why anybody would want to do that, but if you, just in case, I know Samsung allows you to do that, OnePlus does as well. Google Pixel, I do not remember them having this option. I'm pretty sure most people don't use it anyways, but occasionally I might turn it on just to flex my photography skills. <laughs> and one of the features that is available on the Moto Razr Plus that I don't really use that often or I forget that it's there is the ability to kind of flick your phone and turn on the flashlight. They call it chop. You can just chop your phone with two flick and then the flashlight will turn on. I noticed I got a notification for that. When I was turning on my flashlight via the notification shade, I got to pull it down and then I got to pull it down again due to the fact that my icons are set up certain ways. I can always just move it to the top, but I was doing that and then Motorola reminded me I can just chop my phone to turn on the flashlight. So you can do that with the phone open and you can do it with the phone closed as well. But when it's closed, it's a lot harder to do. I, don't know, I feel like I might get carpal tunnel or hurt my wrist. <laughs> flicking my phone this way and sometimes you might inadvertently activate the camera while you're flicking your phone because you might be holding the power button on the side and as you're flicking it you might be double tapping it but it is a somewhat cool feature i was trying to integrate that more in my daily life or try to remember to use it and set up manually going into the settings so this wraps up day 17 motorola razor plus 2023 is still a great phone it's not perfect a lot of fun to use so many random features built in such as this chopping feature it's definitely one of the more unique phones in the market so you're looking for something compact stylish new fun refreshing i would highly recommend it if you have been using the same iphone for the last 20 years <laughs> with just different numbers at the end and you're ready to switch ecosystem this might be worth a shot or you're just tired of using any um rectangular chocolate shaped candy bar phone this is definitely a really fun phone to use if you already have it i would enjoy it if you haven't bought it already i mentioned my other prior videos just wait till the galaxy z flip 5 comes out and see how that compare i would imagine the z flip would have a better camera but so far, this is the only flipping phone in the market today that has like a full 3.6 display in the front that you can use every single app on. I personally do not use every single app, but I like the ability to. And I just like the fact I can scroll through notification, check things, and just do light usage on the outside. And that is more than enough for me. Just having that little functionality is enough. When I was using the Flip 4 and hated having to open up my phone every single time I want to use it. With the Motorola, I don't need to open it every single time. And for that 10 to 20% of the time, that saves me the frustration of having to open a phone if I don't need to. That is a significant enough upgrade for me. So far, really enjoying this phone. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Any other topics you want me to cover, please add them below. I'll do another video covering Instagram how it works the in and out the quality and everything like that in my next video but 
Just always taking your topics and suggestions in the comments. I will make videos on these if I haven't covered them already. Try my best not to be redundant. There's so many features and components and things to think about when owning a smartphone. So every one of these videos, I try to cover a different topic when possible. And at the end of the week, I would do a recap just on my overall experience during my whole time with this phone. And I think that's probably like the best way to review phone videos because you try to capture everything in a 10 minute video. I mean, you can do a high level summary, but you miss out on a lot of the small details, the day-to-day -day basis of owning the phone. You can get the high-level overview, but you can watch all the reviews you want. But once you actually own the phone and use it, you will notice all the small annoying things, all the cool things. Some little things like that. I try to cover in depth with all my phone reviews. Moto Razr Plus has been a super fun phone to use. I got another week or so left with this phone before I switch over to the Pixel Fold whenever that arrives. Really excited to see Google's first implementation of their folding phone and see how that goes. Alright guys, as usual, thank you for watching. Appreciate your support and comments as always. Please check out my other daily vlogs if you haven't already and see you guys over there.